Hello, hello, and welcome back to Fantabulous, where we draw product development sketches of handbags, and we colorize them on Adobe Illustrator, and give them textures as well. Today, I'm going to do something a little more simple. I got here a cosmetics bag, which is probably something that most handbag product development people will have to do at some point in their careers. Very boring. As you can see, it's got like a nylon zipper. It is got some detail. It's a made in Safiano PVC, fake of course. And you can see it's a Elizabeth Arden gimme bag. So <laughs> let's go for it. Okay, so let's see. First thing we want to do is measure this puppy here. Let's see. Get ourselves our tape measure. <coughs> As you can see, it has a filled piping all around. Okay, so it's nine by six and a quarter. Okay, very good. We'll take other measurements as we go along. And the gusset is, looks like about two and three quarters, whatever. I'll, I'll check that in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to put our little fella over on the side. Check all the details. It has a gusset that goes all the way around. No stitching anywhere. And uh, that's about it. I stuffed it out. Whenever you draw your your bags, you want to make sure that they're stuffed out so that they stand up and they look like they're supposed to look once they're in the store. You might need to like give it a little love and push out the piping so that it looks nice because sometimes they look really atrocious when they come out of the bag. So, okay, goodbye. And let's grab our uh, tape measure. So, okay, let's see. I'm going to grab our cheapo pencil you know just a mechanical pencil will do your do the trick <coughs> okay so he said it was nine so i'm gonna go from inches to centimeters and add a little bit so we're gonna do that give ourselves always draw on something of a three-quarter view just because just because you want to make sure that when you draw your spec, you're going to have a view of the gusset construction. If not, you'll have to do, you know, some people do side views and back views and up and down. You could do that also. Usually I reserve that for something called like a life-size sketch. All right, so now back we go. Now we're going to start drawing our bag. Remember, I gave myself some points so that I know where more or less the bag is proportionally going to, you know, match my sample, which is what we want. It doesn't have to be exact because you are going to provide actual measurements when you do your spec. Should probably do a spec class at some point, but let's see. Okay, so now we have an idea of our box front okay i'm gonna do our side now you can use a ruler it's always easier to use a ruler in the beginning and also when you're doing pipings to get parallel lines it's easier all right so once we have our general shape which is a bag that we have here we look at it look back and say okay that looks okay so now i'm gonna add details Okay, so we're gonna add our piping. I usually add all the details in the beginning in pencil and I go over them in a brush marker on the edge and the finer details I go with a fine line, not an extra fine line, a fine line is enough and it'll scan well. So there, go around there, go around there. All right. And this mechanical pencil's not behaving the way it should. Okay, there we are. It's been away for a little bit of a vacation, so I'm a little bit like sleepy. All right, let's see. So I'm seeing here that I want to raise stuff. The good thing about doing a pencil sketch is that you can correct things as you go along with a pencil sketch. And then once you have your, you're happy with your pencil sketch, you can go into it with the uh, permanent colors, the permanent markers, the uh, fine lines and whatever, and you already have a sketch that you're happy with. To go directly, I had a, a 
who shall, a designer who used to work with me, who shall remain nameless. She said, no, just go. And the, I, I didn't like that. I, I wasn't confident enough. Maybe she was, although kind of doubt it. But anyway, okay. I prefer, my preference is to start with pencil. Okay, the gusset started. Okay, I think that's better. It's a better line. The gusset started in the middle of the, all right, I'm going to get another one because this one's not working too well. Hopefully you will behave yourself. Okay, so it starts in the middle. This is where the zipper ends. This is the bottom gusset that becomes the bottom panel goes all the way around as I showed you. Okay, it had a, uh, let's say, um, let's, how do I say nice, cheap, nicely? Okay, it had a economically priced <laughs> zipper, nylon, cheap. Anyway, oh, let's see. So what we're doing now, going to draw in our zipper and nylon zippers they work well enough and they're very cheap I don't like scents you get them dyed to match very easily especially if you're doing like over a thousand okay so now let's look at that zipper pull again it had a little bit of a fun detail somebody thought about this okay it had two uh two jump rings and we have our Safiano detail fine okay so let's go ahead and do those jump rings so here draw our jump ring one two and then we draw our little itty bitty bow kind of a thing half bow kind of an idea remember that the the Safiano here is raw edge and it's painted and they actually did a good job because this bag is several years old and sometimes what happens when you paint PVC is that it comes right off this they didn't paint but it happens to have a good dye through. So you don't have some weird looking uh, edge there, like black or something against the pink. All right, so now I'm gonna draw our little bit of a half bow. Very nice. Okay, so we're almost done. Ta da! Okay, so next up, I'm gonna look at the bow again. Okay, so the bow, we can actually measure that if we want to and give ourselves an idea. So it's four to six. Okay, so let's do that. So <clears throat> I went from a centimeter and a half. So I'm going to go to five points there. All right. I'm going to do the same thing here. It's always nice. Now, this is a little bit foreshortened because we're looking at it at, a, at an angle. So we want to make sure that we have that idea there. So the... Uh, the far side of it, this side, is going to look a little smaller. That's just a bit, an optical illusion that happens when you foreshorten something on a two-dimensional plane. You want to make sure you get that look. You get that kind of foreshortened look because uh, it, it marks you as a good artist. And uh, <laughs> people know these things. Okay, here. So let's go ahead and do our bow. So... They tried to make it look leathery, which is hard because it's PVC, but they, they made an effort. I mean, so we try to make an effort also, right? All right, so there we go. And now we have our bow. Ta-da! Okay. Or as my sister would say, ta-da! All right, here we go. Uh, oh, okay, we get our little bow shading here. We're going to add all the shading when we put it on Adobe Illustrator. This makes it a lot faster, a lot more even. I mean, at some point I might do, just for, you know, nostalgia's sake, paint something up with, a, you know, some kind of markers and bean fang paper and just go all crazy. Okay, let's see. Okay, so now, boing we have ourselves a nice pencil sketch of what we started with okay i think this one looks a little bit too curvy i got a little bit too curvy there so let's get rid of that curve there and erase it okay so once you have your pencil sketch you look at it and you say i love it i hate it whatever you change what you need to change and then you go straight on into marking it up with your markers and your well, I use brush pens. You can actually use a Sharpie to do that. this, but it's not really necessary, but 
I per my preference is brush pens, and they're all different kinds. This is like a Chinese one that's kind of cheap. Tombow's very good also if you want to use those. So here we go. I'm One thing I made a mistake right here, I should have done this a little bit more centered or even used the paper this way, but I didn't. But it's okay because we're going to scan this and the page is not going to show anyway. So now I'm going to do something that I usually try to avoid, but I'm going to do it just to show you. I'm going to use ta -da, my metal pencil. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around edges that are three-dimensional, like things that stand out. Like, for example, the zipper pull. Perfect example. Go around. Now remember, because we're going to be scanning into Adobe Illustrator, we want to make sure that our lines kind of are closed around the edges. Okay, here, you can give a little slick here to give an idea of uh, um, volume. Okay, so the whole point of going around the edges with a thicker pen is to give volume to what you're doing. Uh, let's see, we're going to give this some... Yeah. Say and do, 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 do. I think I'm gonna need a new marker. Sometimes a dry marker actually gives a nice line quality, but you have to be careful because it could die on you. <laughs> and then you're really in trouble. Yeah, this marker is starting to get a little tired. This goes to put out to pasture, take it behind a barn, whatever, but it's still working. Okay, so I abuse my markers, it's terrible. Okay, here we go. There we are. So now we go around the edges and we go up here. Make sure those lines are closed. Yeah. Okay. Curved. Now we might want to add some dimension to this phobo kind of detail that they gave us just because it makes it look a little bit more artsy and also more voluminous. Remember that when you're a product development person, what you're doing doesn't have to be the quality of an illustrator, but it's nice that it should look nice to some degree because you're going to be showing these to buyers sometimes. They want to see what's going on. They kind of get their butts in the showroom and they want to see what's on the table. So you want to show them a sketch that's attractive. They don't want to show them something like, and they might be turned off to the product because people are very fickle, especially in the fashion industry. So you want to make sure that you have some kind of attractive looking sketch, even on your spec, which is, you know, counterintuitive because, you know, sample hand isn't going to really care. But uh, <laughs> the buyer sure will. Okay, so now we are back to our fine line El Cheapo precision pen, which I like very much. There are very expensive pens that you could buy for $11 a piece if you really want to. Um, the only good thing about them that I've found is that they are sometimes with a cheaper pen, you can streak, which is, ugh. you don't want to streak on your beautiful sketch, but it's not that often. So, I mean, you could pay $11 for a pen or two or three. It's uh, really up to you. Okay, so here we go. So now we're going to do our fine line stuff. So here I'm going to start out with my zipper pull detail okay remember to make all the details very nicely you only have to do it once so take your time while you're doing it go around the edges oh my hit my camera a little bit there okay now very nice and very nice okay so now we have our idea. The uh, Safiano texture, we're definitely going to put it in when we do our Adobe Illustrator because it's so much easier. Okay, here we go. They actually have a texture in there, texture maps, in the swatch libraries that look like it, so you don't even have to do anything. You just put it on a diagonal and throw it on in there and uh, you're done. Okay, make your life easy. I had a teacher, me, she be well. Her name was Professor Mears, and she used to tell us constantly, work smarter, not harder. And there's some truth to that. Although many times in the fashion industry, you have to work very hard. Okay, so 
as opposed to what people might think. Okay. All right. So now I am running our piping. And you see, I'm using a ruler and I'm using a metal ruler. The reason is that metal tends to warp less than anything else other than obviously wood. Plastic cracks really nicely for you, especially when you are working on something. I've had that happen a couple of times. Not fun. Okay. So here we go. Getting our piping in there. Nice dainty little piping. And we want to make sure that our piping edges are closed because we're going to use that to color in once we do a traceover in Adobe Illustrator. And you know, we close the lines very carefully. Okay. Again. All right. Let me just get around this side. And we want to make sure that we have our nice little curve there. Oops, I missed one. All right, here, let's do the bottom one. Okay. So this is how you do a piping. Okay. All right. So, again, we look at our sketch and we see if we're contented with what it looks like. Right now it's looking pretty good. So let's go around. And I think this had a detail of stitching. Yes, it does. Okay. I'm going to add the stitching by hand. However, you could also do that on Adobe Illustrator. I like hand-drawn quality, but if you want to add some, you know, detail on Adobe Illustrator like stitching, it could also be done and it does not look that bad. This is just my preference. Okay, so now we're going to work on the zipper. Mm -hmm. So we gently go around. And we're getting there. All right. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies galore. Okay. So we're going to draw our zipper. Now I'm putting in the detail of the, um, the cut edge. Although it does not have edge paint, you want to include that because many times you'll be working with a factory and out of the country, well, most of the time these days, and the sample hands will look at a sketch and will not always look at the spec completely, or they might not understand it that much. And you want to make sure that all the details that you are showing in the sketch are accurate because sometimes they go by the sketch. And um, if you make something look like a turned in edge when it's supposed to be a cut edge, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get a turned in edge. Even if you wrote it on the spec that it's supposed to be a cut edge. Which is uh, unfortunate, but it can happen. Okay, so now we're almost ready. Now let's draw in our idea of a zipper teeth. <coughs> wow. Lots of allergies. Okay. So, we're getting there. Little teeth is good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the top stitch. I'm not going to put in the uh, Elizabeth Art in New York because usually what happens, you don't want to draw that in. They usually give you artwork and you just throw it on the sketch. And they want you to use their artwork. They don't want to see some fancy sh uh, schmancy artistic version of their logo. They want to see their logo. So I'm not going to bother with that because I do not have a little Elizabeth Arden logo in my uh, my CAD files, but and I don't know if I'd get sued anyway. But all right, so there we go. Very nice indeed. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this over here. Okay, so now the only thing we're missing is the edge stitch around our zipper, which pretty easy. Just pretend you're a sewing machine. <laughs> okay. Now, once we're done here, we can go ahead and grab our eraser, kneaded eraser or whatever, a good quality eraser. You don't want a junky eraser. Okay. There we are. Almost there. 
Okay, done. Okay, so now we have our sketch. Ta-da! Same, same. Okay, so <clears throat> we look at our sketch. We say, okay, it looks fine. Now what we do is we grab our eraser, which I use this fella over here. Oh, somebody took my eraser. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it lost its jacket, but it's just a, you know, a poly eraser, a pencil. And making sure that nobody is too smushy and we're not going to get smeared. And I'm going to erase my pencil lines. And what I will be left with is with a sketch of a handbag that we just measured and sketched out. Now, okay, let's have a look. Clean, 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 clean. Okay, I missed a spot there. Want to get all those little mark, little pencil marks out because I'm gonna scan this in and just toss it onto a Adobe Illustrator in our next class, and we'll color it in, and we will do um, some textures. Okay, so that was our class for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, hope you subscribe, and see you around. Bye.